Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Deb Johns. I'm Associate Director of Admissions at Yale University. I'm so happy that you could join us for our Yale University session, where we're going to highlight the Native American Cultural Center. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I work closely with the Native American Center and I'm really excited, Cultural Center, and really excited to have you join us this morning. Hi, good morning. My name is Alfie Daniels. I use she, her, hers pronouns. Uh, it's great to be speaking with all of you uh, today. I am the other Yale uh, representative here for College Horizons. Great, so what we plan to do with this session is we're gonna show you a, six, a little over six minute video about the Native American Cultural Center. Then we have a, this, we have a group of people who will join us after that. To, uh, we'll be able to ask and answer some questions. And then we're gonna finish off with a video that is a day in the life. So as I said, it's about 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm going to stop my video and mute myself and share this first video with you. Welcome to the Native American Cultural Center's YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a general overview of the NACC. We'll be going over the history, leadership, community highlights, as well as the major events we do throughout the year. We're also going to talk about uh, ways that you can engage with us, even if you're not on campus. So I'll try to include some timestamps here on the side. So if you want to jump through various topics, go ahead. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. Native American to graduate from Yale was Henry Rowe Cloud in 1910. Henry Rowe Cloud was Winnebago and is by far the most highly regarded alums of Yale University within our indigenous community. The Native American Cultural Center was established in 1993. It was originally located actually on the third floor of the Asian American Cultural Center, which is now located right next door to our current NACC. Now that you know we're the NACC, Talk about the current leadership so that you can get to know us a little bit better. Hi everyone, I'm Diana Onko Angire. She is Diana Onko Angire in Shia. She is look at the initial, not a pot on the mana. She is touching the chin. Now come gi gai gura. Hello everyone, I'm Diana Onko Angire. I am Navajo Kaiwa and Comanche. My mother is Navajo from Miami Valley, Utah, and my father is from the Southern Oklahoma Hobart area, and he is Kaiwa and Comanche. I'm the assistant director of the NA. ACC and I oversee the day-to-day -day functions of the building. I also supervise the NACC house staff who are responsible for a lot of the major events that happen throughout the year for the NACC community. We also have our director and assistant dean Matthew Macamino. Dean Macamino is from the Grand Traverse Bay Band of Chippewa Indians of Michigan. The students often refer to him as Dean M. Dean Macamino is a big fan of walking. He's also a residential fellow of Trumbull College and lives there with his wife and two kids. like the Yale University Art Gallery and the Yale Repertory Theater and so many more. The first reason why I feel like this is an, a really important event is because it was highlighting one of our historic exhibi exhibitions at the UAG, the Yale University Art Gallery, which was also curated by three of our Yale alums, Katie McCleary, Joseph Zordon, and Leah Shrestinian, who were very active within our NACC community. Their exhibit was called Place Nations, Generations Beans. At the same time, we also had a play happening at the Yale Repertory Theater in the spring of 2020 called Manhattan. This play was written by playwright and lawyer Mary Catherine Nagel that was both written and casted with indigenous people. Finally, this event allowed us to highlight one of our local uh, catering companies, Sly Fox Den, that is owned by Wampanoag chef Sherry Pocknett. exciting statistics that you all might be interested in. With the Yale Indigenous community, we have roughly 150 students scattered throughout our Yale College, undergrad, and graduate and professional schools. We also have over 40 tribal nations represented, um, and that's just a rough estimate. We definitely probably have more, and we love to highlight them within our all of nations. It's also very important to note that every year our freshman class gets bigger and bigger with our Indigenous community, and we're so excited and hope that that will continue to grow. I 
also want to highlight that there are very many events that happen on campus on a regular basis, both at the NACC and elsewhere. This allows our Indigenous community to have fun, meet new people, and also stay connected. We have events like baking and bonding, movie marathons, long nights against procrastination that allows students to study and be accountable to each other if they're studying for major exams and papers. We also have a family weekend dinner for our community so that students who have family on campus or if their family was unable to come to campus, we can all come together for a moment, have some really good food together. That is a picture of our most recent Christmas party with our students, faculty, and community members. some of our students being highlighted in the media. In the spring of 2019, we had three women within the field and discipline of architecture, Angelica Gallegos, Sherelle Brown, and Summer Sutton. These three women co-founded the Indigenous Scholars of Architecture, Planning, and Design, or ISAPD, and continue to be a force to reckon with within the discipline of architecture. In the spring of 2020, Megan Lada Gupta was interviewed by the NPR Detroit Today as a reporter for Bridge Magazine. She's also the editor and founder of Indigenizing the News. We also have Nolan Arkansas, who wrote a news article in One Feather, his local tribal newspaper. So there are many ways that you can stay connected with us, even if you're not on campus. We of course have our Yale NACC Facebook that you are more than welcome to check out. We also have an Instagram that has a plethora of highlights and events. So if you would like to browse through uh, previous events that happened, be sure to check out our Instagram. We also have a Twitter. Be sure to look us up at Yale Natives. We also have our Yale and ACC website. We definitely try to keep our events up to date as possible. We also have a few videos on there, as well as Bulldog Days that happens in April of each year for all of our incoming freshmen. We hope you enjoyed learning about our community and thank you so much for taking the time to click on this video. We look forward to seeing you in the future. We are back. And now it's time for everybody to introduce themselves. Bonjour everyone. My name is Matthew McAmino. I'm the Assistant Dean of Yale College and Director of the Native American Cultural Center. My pronouns are he, his, him. And it's uh, nice to be here with everyone. Hey everyone, I'm Diana Uncle Angade. Um, that was me in the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I am the Assistant Director of the Native American Cultural Center and I use the pronouns she, her, hers. Buju, Anin, everybody. Uh, my name is Hema Patel. I use she, her pronouns and I'm a rising sophomore at Yale um, in Sabre College. Um, I was a first liaison at the Native American Cultural Center and I'm a Culturizens uh, alum from some year, the one that you pinned a few a few years ago. Um, oh, and hello? I'm Turtle Mountain Ojibwe from North Dakota. Sorry. Okay, hello. Um, I'm Truman Pipestem. He, him, his. Um, I'm Eastern Band Cherokee, Osage and Ota, Missouri. And like Hema, I am also a rising sophomore at Yale. I am also a, a first year liaison at Yale, and I am also a College Horizons graduate from the year before. That's great, thank you everybody. So we have a bunch of questions for you guys. So Alfie, let's get us started. Sure, so the first question is for Matthew and Diana. Um, that video was great. I think it really covers a lot and gives a great introduction to the community in the Native American Cultural Center and the programming that goes on there. But I'm just wondering if there's anything else that you would add um, about the center that you don't think gets covered in the video itself. Yeah, I think just the one thing that I wanted to mention, um, and we might even talk about it later or hear more about it later, but it's how students are engaging with the NACC. So um, you, you heard in just um, with Hema and Truman's introduction that they were both first year liaisons. And so there are a lot of different ways that students can be engaged, whether it's student staff or just coming to our community. So I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, there was a lot covered in the video. I, I think two things. One, really kind of um, expanding on the peer liaison program, uh, which is a first year experience program uh, run through the NACC. And it's really there to help students with, you know, choosing classes to anything that may kind of come up throughout the year. And so that, that's a really great program. And then I think the other thing I wanted to highlight was the uh, faculty dinner, which we just started this year, where students were able 
uh, to invite a faculty member over to the NACC and have dinner with them and, uh, you know, and get to really know their professor outside of the classroom was a great opportunity as well. That's great. So Hammond Truman, there's so many activities that happen within the NACC. And for our audience, we refer to the Native American Cultural Center as the NACC. Um, what, what's been your favorite activity this past year? Um, there are so many activities, pretty much like many every week. Um, so it's hard to choose. And they all range from like walking in on people napping in the NACC to uh, like the really fancy indigenous art event that you guys saw in the video. Um, but my one of my favorites is baking and bonding. It happens once a week and it's run by uh, NACC house staff and usually like upperclassmen, whoever comes by. Um, there's a theme every week and we just sit in the kitchen baking, studying, uh, talking, listening to music, sometimes dancing, um, and just like enjoying each other's company. It's a really good way to de-stress and eat good food and just hang out. For Red Territory, Anae, um, just, just a few things to start, check them out later. But one thing I would like to actually elaborate on is something called the Oklahoma Sovereignty Tour, which is a spring break ship trip that the NACC took um, this, past, um, this past spring break to Oklahoma to essentially just go throughout the state, um, meet with different tribes and tribal programs and basically learn, we have this thing called sovereignty. What are we doing with it? It's, even though it got, cu got cut short um, due to the pandemic, it, like the, the few days that we had were absolutely amazing. And this is coming from someone who lives in Oklahoma. Everything there was so well designed and planned that everything was a new experience for me and I absolutely adored it. So Emma and Truman, you know, one of the things that we emphasize a lot to our prospective students is this uh, concept of Yale being an and university. Um, and what we mean by that is, for example, that you can study for uh, biology and ethnicity, race, and migration, um, that you can be active in many different communities beyond your residential college and your involvement in the NACC. Um, could you tell these students some of the other activities that you participate in outside of the center? Yeah, um, my main activity outside of working and just like hanging out at the Native American Cultural Center is uh, Yale's uh, first ever hip hop team, Rhythmic Blues. You can look us up on YouTube and Instagram and all sorts of things to get a well-rounded um, view. But I had studied classical Indian dance, Bharatanatyam, uh, pretty much my whole life and I wanted to try something new. So I decided to audition for hip hop, something so brand new to me. Um, and I ended up getting in and just like meeting this incredible group of dancers who all do hip hop, but also other styles, um, and also, you know, regular school, cultural backgrounds, all sorts of stuff. So meet and meeting them from all types of um, classes. Uh, and we, it was such a good experience to just like perform all over in different venues around campus and get to know new spaces. Um, a bunch of people from the NACC would come to all my shows, including Deb came um, to our fall show. Um, and that meant so much to see the community coming together for all of our activities, even if they're not directly through the NACC. So, yeah, it's just an incredible dance community at Yale that keeps growing. Yeah, um, I like the thing, the big thing I like to get involved in outside of the NACC is this improv group called Lux Improvitas. We are, we are Yale's youngest, but longest okay. form improv group, as in we, we improvise like 30 minute long full stories, which is a lot of fun. Like, I, like I'll be honest, I am by no means a theater kid. I don't have much experience in acting. Like, like I can tell, like I am like alongside a bunch of other theater kids in there. I feel it's a little bit, I'm a little bit out of place in that whole dynamic. But at the end of the day, like nothing, like I'm always still welcome to show back up. Like it's just essentially five hours a week where I go and laugh at myself and other people for acting silly. It's so much fun. It's not like I know like like some extracurriculars um at 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 schools uh, may like be like um time consuming and and draining on your energy. For me, this is just a way to like essentially just recharge and just do stupid, thoughtless um like games, you know? It's a lot of fun. So at the end of the day, it's always just a way to find some way to keep myself pr somehow productive and completely unproductive at the same time. <laughs> That's a great answer. What were some of the things that were on your mind that were important to you when you were looking at different colleges and universities? 
Um, I think I had three main things that I was using as like my criteria to form my list, which I did through College Horizons. Um, and one of those was nature, like finding a place with a lot of nature because of my childhood in North and South Dakota and also in Minneapolis, um, where I am now. And Yale sort of was a good balance between a city and nature because I visited East Rock, which is like this park, forest park thing, um, pretty close to campus. And I was able to just like walk through the woods and enjoy that. Um, and I'm excited to experience uh, spring at Yale because I've heard it's like really beautiful, but we didn't get to totally um, fulfill that uh, this year. Um, so yeah, that was one of my criteria. The other thing was the size. Um, I think Yale is like a really good size because you can walk down the street and recognize people, but also, and recognize as in like, oh, like that's my best friend walking down the street, but also people who you've like seen in the dining hall, but like you can wave at them. It's just like nice to know that everybody's uh, there for like the same thing to, to be at Yale and to be part of that community. But then there's also the whole city you can explore and um, people, speakers coming in. So it's like, you're never just stuck in one little bubble. Um, and then the last thing that I was looking for, which Yale was probably the only school that could really fulfill this for me, um, was a really good balance of both South Asian and Native American communities because um, of my mixed heritage and my cultural backgrounds. And after I found out that Yale had the uh, cultural centers, I was just like, oh my God, this is perfect because the Native American Cultural Center is located on the same block as the Asian American Cultural Center. So I could just walk in between them. I could study at one and then get bored and then go over the other one and study or whatever I felt like doing. Um, and definitely on campus, I participated in so many events, some like on the same exact day, uh, both that are from both the Cultural Center separately and then also that they do together. Um, so that was just like such a lucky find for me. Actually, no, I had one really important factor, and that was whether or not there was a solid, there was a solid Native community at, at whatever school I was looking at. The thing about Yale is it's this perfect size of this, like, in-betweenness of being a small student group and being a large population, where in between you have a community that is both, like, always active, because there, there are enough people there to always be involved and be there as a friendly face whenever you walk into the cultural center, and at the same time, it's small enough so that everyone there knows your name and, and cares about you. Like, if, like let's say if we're all going to an, um, to an event, like we'd have to hop on, hop on buses or get in cars and head out. With a larger population, they'll get as many people as they can, they'll head out. But with this smaller Yale Native community, it's like, people will call you, they'll check in on you and say, where are you? We don't, want, we don't want you to miss the bus. Like at the end of the day, like you will have everyone in the community wonder where you are if you're not if you're not somewhere or if, if you have a bad day i can promise you you have everyone in the native community pull together just to make sure you're feeling all right and along with that you know uh what would be the one piece of advice that you would offer these students when they're going through their search making their choices what would you offer them in terms of advice i think that one thing that i wish i had paid more attention to or internalized a bit more was just staying really open-minded because no matter where you go, you can make what you want out of the resource that are, that are resources that are offered to you. So um, it's a good idea not to fixate on one particular dream because you might know, not know what you're missing. Like I didn't even put Yale on my list at College Horizons. <laughs> I actually put it on like closer to like November. So just like a month before the deadline, just because I was like, why not? Um, and it's ended up being like pretty much a dream come true. So just stay super open-minded and also to just always ask for help and uh, reach out. Like, for example, even after watching this video, if you want to DM at Yale Natives, like you can get connected to us and we can tell you anything you want to know, like straight up anything. Um, and on the Instagram, you can also see like a bunch of uh, things about what happened this year. I have something on there called my year, my first year at Yale and 10 photos that you can check out pretty much halfway through the page um, that showcases some of the stuff that I did this year. Whenever you're on campus somewhere wondering if it's for you, go for a walk. Make sure it's by yourself. Just walk quietly by yourself and just think to yourself, can I imagine living, can I imagine myself living here for four years and does this environment bring me joy? Because if you have a, if you have a solid, pro, if you have a good program at a school, what is it to you if you're going to be unhappy all those four years? Like, I'll be honest, that's how I chose Yale and I like, I remember the exact spot on my walk where I just where I learned that it was it was a place for me like walking under like a little art walking under the archway for the Yale University Art Gallery like that was it but that was after just a, a bunch of time of myself. Yes those are uh, both great answers uh, and very helpful advice for the for those students who are looking 
at colleges now. Um, my final question is for you, Matthew and Diana. Um, I know you both have had long careers and have worked in different uh, indigenous spaces on, on other campuses. Um, what would you say makes Yale and the NACC so unique and special um, compared to some of the other places that you've worked? Yeah, um, I actually want to start off by saying that I completely forgot to mention that I'm also a College Horizons alum. <laughs> but I think the, the one thing that I feel like uh, that makes Yale and the NACC special is that I feel I do really get the sense that the student voice is at the center of everything that they do within the NACC. Um, and I saw at the moment that I came in for the first time on the East Coast, first time for my interview, um, and seeing that students were the ones who were picking and choosing and hiring the people who were gonna lead the NACC. And I think that that just really speaks, um, it speaks volumes to the way that the NACC is led. And, um, and so I just, I'm really thankful to be in this space with them and that they're there with me alongside planning the Oklahoma Sovereignty Tour and planning certain events along with us so that they know that their experience is also embedded within each of our programming pieces. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, I think three things kind of stand out for me. You know, the first, and I've, I've worked at institutions that were more regionalized. And so it was most of the student or population or culture was Anishinaabe or maybe Diné or, or Ute. Uh, but, you know, here at y Yale, it, it's it's truly is an intertribal kind of community and, and students and staff and people from all different tribal nations. And so that really kind of stands out. The second one is that the number of center of support throughout the university that do native activities as well beyond the native center, you know, so it's not just the NACC doing uh, native sponsored events, it, it's other academic departments, it's um, other art galleries, you know, there's a lot of people who uh, do native things and, and really bring us and we work together and collaborate and so that, that's been fantastic. And then I think the last thing, you know, it, it really, you know, a little bit cliche, but it really is the people. The people are great and the students are great um, and really getting to know that community and creating that family atmosphere has been, has been wonderful. And so we would really, you know, um, want you all to consider that and, and come join us. Thank you. Thank you so much. So listen, we're going to we're going to finish by showing a video that Truman's going to introduce us to. But before I go, I just want to thank Emma. Thank Truman. Thank Diana. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Alfie. You're such a team, great team player. So Truman, why don't you send us out? Yeah, sure. So we have a, we have a good friend at the Native American Cultural Center whose name is Jay Fi. Um, he is a rising junior. Um, I want to say maybe American Studies major. That may or may not be right, but he's not here to to, ch to fact check me. So we'll just roll with it. You'll see like more than just more than just like a, a tour to the Native American Cultural Center. Like you'll see like his classes, like like his residential college where he lives. Just it's nice. You'll just I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Uh, Davenport College, Monobega Duras. Hello everyone, my name is Jay Five. I'm a sophomore in Davenport College studying American Studies and welcome to a day in my life. So you don't think like having more events on campus like they're doing now? Um, welcome, this is the Native American Cultural Center here at Yale University. I'm the Assistant Director, Diana Onko Angede. Um, I grew up in Norman, Oklahoma, but uh, my family, my mother's maternal family hails from the Navajo Nation, um, and my dad is Kiowa Kanchi. I just finished my ASL 110 class. I take ASL to fulfill my language requirement here at Yale, and my sweet mate also signs. Hi, uh, my name is Selena. I'm a Coda, which means that my first language is ASL. Both my parents are deaf. Uh, you should definitely come here to Yale. Take ASL. It's a pilot program. It's constantly expanding, and it's really great. Thank you. <laughs>
American Culture Center, and we'd like to give you guys a tour. So come on inside. Welcome. This is the conference room. Um, we have a lot of our social activities here, as well as dinners and classes. And behind us, we have the Wall of Nations, which features flags from various indigenous communities on campus. So there's various ways to get involved here at the NACC. You could be on house staff, we have grad affiliates, or you could be a peer liaison. I serve on the house staff, and my friend Anna. Hey all, I'm Anna, I'm Sac and Fox Simno, Muskogee Creek from Oklahoma, and I'm the head peer liaison. watching this to find out whose land you currently occupy. Hey all, we're here at the first Indigenous art exhibit curated by three Yale alums, Leah Shrestinian, Joseph Zordon's Bad River Ojibwe, and Katie McCleary's Chippewa Creek.